Fierce fighting continues in the Luhansk region. Ukrainian servicemen have to hold back the enemy from three sides at once. The Russian army, having accumulated serious forces in the direction of Severodonetsk, is unable to capture the city completely. Part of it is under the control of the armed forces of Ukraine. The enemy attempts to advance towards Lysychansk are unsuccessful. Fighting continues in Severodonetsk, Toshkivka and in the area of Vrubivka. There are many wounded in Usechansk. During the last two days, six residents of Usechansk and two of Zolote were hospitalized in other regions of the country. Serhii Haidai, head of the Luhansk Regional Military Administration. Deliveries and supplies to Severodonetsk are still possible despite heavy fighting in the city and logistical problems. The situation is complicated but not critical. Logistics is very complicated, but it exists today. On the other side of the Siversky Donetsk River, we not only have a military garrison located in Severodonetsk, but our guys also control a significant area near Severodonetsk. So we are not talking about some kind of encirclement of the defense forces. The Russian army, unable to conduct full-scale street fighting, is shelling the city's industrial zone. The area near the Don Sauda plant and nearby residential buildings are under fire. The situation is the same at the glass factory. The Azot plant was hit again. Our forces are standing right in the area of the industrial zone, and the Russians cannot storm it with manpower. They mainly do it with aircraft and artillery, destroying our defensive structures. Therefore, there is a lot of destruction around the industrial zone, in the residential areas of the old city, a lot of destruction and fires. As for the Azot plant, they are shelling the entire territory. There is information about the destruction of the administrative and industrial buildings. The evacuation of civilians in the region continues. The day before, another 52 residents of Lysychansk and Privilla were taken out. God bless you and thank you for getting us safely. It's good that we got there. What else can I say? Hold on so that Lysychansk remains ours. Conquer it. Shoot those bastards so that they are gone. Let them be on their way. While the police, rescuers and volunteers go after people, they bring humanitarian aid, food and water to those who remain in shelters. <laughs> Many thanks to the guys, because we need all the help we can get now. We need it. Thank you very much. Fierce fighting also continues in the Donetsk region. As a result of the shelling, the northern part of the region was left without electricity. The power supply was restored after six hours, but there is a possibility of repeated outages. Currently, the electricity supply of the pumping stations has been restored. We collect water in reservoirs, replenish stocks and do everything to ensure that our settlements, especially outlying ones, have water. Pavlo Kirilenko, head of the Donetsk Regional Military Administration. A 28-year-old Ukrainian soldier with the call sign Pashtet is defending the front line in the village of New York, Donetsk region. He says that Russia, over the past three months of a full-scale invasion of Ukraine, has not decided what goal it is pursuing. Firstly, he came to Ukraine in vain. And secondly, I can't understand why he needs it. He has his own large and rich country. Just put things in order and you can live in peace. His country is a mess. And he says, let me invade Ukraine and make a mess there. That's what I think. We will win anyway. Victory will be ours. Servicemen of the separate 103rd Territorial Defense Brigade are assisting residents of the frontline districts of Donetsk region. They provide hundreds of elderly people, large families and people with disabilities with food, medicines and hygiene products. The duty of the military is to provide everything necessary to the civilians. They must constantly feel our support, our care and the presence of the Ukrainian army and Ukraine. They help us. Thank God the guys come and help. We eat bread from Lviv. They brought it. Some grandmother baked it for us. The victory should be ours. Everything will be Ukraine. There is no other way. Since the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, 502 civilians were killed. Another 1,286 were wounded as a result of shelling in the Donetsk region. The exact number of victims in Mariupol and Volnobakha is still impossible to estimate. Reported by Marina Stepanenko, Julia Bill, UATV News.